Hello, welcome back to Oops All Archers FE8 Evolved. Today we're tackling Chapter 4, which is our first monster route map. This map also provides us with our first introduction to the preps menu. Here we will do the following. We'll undeploy Ross, Franz and Mulder, as they won't be doing anything on this map, and we'll deploy Colm. We will give Gilliam the Shining Bow from the previous map. And then we're going to move around people's starting positions. We will move Seth to the rightmost deployment slot. Vanessa and Gilliam stay near the bottom. And then Colm is sw switched with Girl Sia. Chapter 4 is yet another four turn clear map, the time frame of which will allow us to reach both villages, though the contents of neither are important to the run. We also have a new unit, Alter. He has good stats, but for the same reasons as Mulder will not be used long term in this run. His personal skill, Focus, doesn't really do much in a general run, but especially in this format, where the crits are immensely stacked in our favour, it does very little to nothing at all. The reason why Seth's deployment position here is important is that it allows him to just reach the tile needed to kill the Revenant closest to Alter's forced deploy position. This means that he will enemy phase kill both of the Moguls as they are just perfectly in his range, as you can see here. Gilliam moves down with the Shining Bow equipped and kills the Revenant over here. Vanessa moves directly to his right, therefore meaning that Gilliam will kill both of these bone walkers on enemy phase. Colm kills the other revenant so we can get him close to level 3, and then not have to worry about his speed for the chapter 7 energy ring steal, and Artur collects the iron axe in the village. Erica and Garcia position themselves to wait for the Revenant reinforcements who will appear after entering the reinforcement trigger zone. So that's the first Bone Walker being killed with the Shining Bow. Gilliam gains level. And here's the second one. And now Seth kills both the Moguls. Okay, first turn done. On turn two, Gilliam continues to move south. And Vanessa, Iron Bow kills this Revenant across the river, hitting level four in the process. Seth moves down into the forest, holding onto an Iron Sword. This will allow him to kill the free reinforcements that spawned on the enemy phase. And he will gain a level in the process. There we go. There the reinforcements are. So now on turn 3, Vanessa kills the Revenant that's blocking the bridge, allowing Seth to Iron Sword kill this other Revenant. Gilliam moves south yet again with the Shining Bow equipped, meaning that he will get to kill these two enemies on enemy phase. And now we deal with the reinforcements. One apiece goes to each of Colm, Garcia, and Erica. This final one doesn't move, so you can freely feed that experience to anyone. 
This setup here is technically experience optimal, as Erica will be able to get one experience from getting attacked. And there's that one experience. Gilliam gets his first enemy phase kill. Then Seth gets his. This is Gilliam's second enemy phase kill this turn, and final kill this map. Getting one final level. This is the final turn. Gilliam collects loot because he has nothing else to do on this map. Vanessa kills the mogul who tried to attack Seth on the enemy phase. For the final reinforcement kill, between Colm, Garcia, and Erica, I've decided that it's most important for Erica to get this kill, as Colm is only one round of combat off of hitting level 3. This means that Erica is able to get her first level of this run. Then lastly, Seth. Kills the boss, getting one final level. This brings us to a total of 17 turns. Great. Once again, reassessing our units. Seth is now level 7, halfway to level 8. He has used swords a total of 22 times, for 121 plus 22 is equal to 243 weapon experience, so he has 108 left to go to get to S rank. Gilliam here is now level 7, only 3 levels off of becoming a wyvern, and Vanessa is nearly level 5. Erica has gotten a level. Colm is one round of combat off from hitting the speed threshold required for the energy ring steel should I want it, and Garcia has gotten one more kill as Flunky. Thanks for watching. The next few videos may take longer to plan, as next chapter we will have our first staffer joining us. This means that I'm considering whether to set all weapon hits to 255, so that I always have someone she can heal for, st for staff weapon experience. Thanks again, and I hope to see you for chapter 5.